special delivery. The delivery of that which is uncommon, exceptional in character, different from others. Special delivery, Army Air Forces style is designed for a particular function, but unlike other highly specialized functions, is not limited in range, aims, or purposes. During times of war, air power is war power, as destructive as is necessary to destroy the enemy, but AAF planes, large and small, have more than destructive power. They have constructive power greatly beneficial to the nation. Thus, in times of peace, air power is peace power. During war, instantaneous delivery was a daily function. Rear penetrations delivered at a moment's notice to assist pushing, back-breaking assaults of the ground forces sometimes meant the difference between victory and defeat. But AAF special delivery is not confined to war. Disrupted communications broken by the ravages of nature are immediately replaced, no matter how difficult the terrain. This same airplane was called upon to assist the late General Patton maintain the astounding speed of his history-making drive through Europe. Yet at the same time, in other parts of the world, the C-47 airplane was dropping food and medical supplies to men marooned in impenetrable regions. The size of the aircraft helped, not hindered the different calls for delivery. A small aircraft could use landing areas impossible for use by larger aircraft. One of the great accomplishments of the little cub was the ferrying of wounded from isolated outposts. flying over jungle or water. The long-range hospital planes that gave medical attention as well as transportation to suffering men. Airline routes for peacetime were pioneered by the famed Air Transport Command's War Special Delivery. The formidable flying fortress that brought fear to the hearts of the enemy carried serum over the great ice expanse of Alaska. Helicopters, never used as combat planes, penetrated areas where even the small cub could not enter and made on-the-spot landings to deliver everything from secret pouches to babies. The Tokyo famed B-25 Mitchell, one of the outstanding planes of the war, is now fighting for health. Instead of bombs, the B-25 now sprays DDT over large areas in a very short space of time and on a moment's notice. Epidemics can now be prevented or stopped suddenly. These gliders help to bring the free peace we now enjoy. In the peaceful future, they again will be working for you in various ways, detaching freight gliders along a regular route, just as freight trains now drop off cars at way stations. Your Air Force is continually developing new and more astonishing aircraft. The XF-12, a new photo reconnaissance ship. The XP-84, a new fighter craft with speed and punch. The small flying wing and the giant XB-35. The C-74, one of the world's largest the AAF dreams of today will be the aircraft of tomorrow. The B-29, one of the most favored of our Sky Armada, spread long-range death and destruction on the Japanese enemy and proved the vulnerability of their home islands to air attack. History was made at Hiroshima and Nagasaki when the B-29 dropped the first atom bombs. After the Japs were brought to their knees by this stupendous attack, the B-29 continued its history-making career by flying non-stop from Tokyo to Washington, D.C., accomplishing one of aviation's great feats. Special delivery of America's historic achievements was the destiny of the B-29.
for the Army Air Forces next committed the giant B-29 Armada to science. Never before had such a mighty target been assembled beneath a bomb site. 73 ships in a five-mile area, it was a bombardier's dream target. On Kwajalein, the ground crews prepared for crossroads, fully aware of the watchful eyes of the world. With calm precision, they checked the motors for last-minute adjustments. Each entire aircraft was given a final tune-up. Special equipment, long kept under protective covers against the elements, was brought out and installed. The last rehearsals are held with the drone planes carriers of all kinds of scientific instruments for measuring the effects of the blast. The ground beep pilot takes the plane off the ground. The beep television control in the mothership takes over for the maneuvers. Finally, the drone is turned back to a ground beep control for a perfect landing. The mighty A-bomb was carefully loaded into Dave's dream, the ship chosen to carry and drop the bomb. Constant guard was maintained and loading activities were carried on behind canvas screens. Aboard the target ships, last minute preparations were also underway. Animals of various kinds were readied for tests to tell what effects the bomb had on living things. The sheep, first sheared, are then covered with ointment as protection against flash burns. The effects of the bomb on these animals, while not conclusive, will furnish many clues as to the effect on human beings. Leaving their ships, many of them for the last time, crew members boarded barges bound for the observation fleet and safety. Early morning, July 1st, 1946. Able day in the Pacific, D-Day of Operation Crossroads. One of the world's largest aircraft, carrying a tiny particle of atomic energy, speeded down the runway for science. AAF special delivery of man's most terrible secret, a delivery time to the split second. Scientists, statesmen, military men, and John Q. Public all over the world had turned their eyes toward Bikini. Many precautions were taken to prevent injury to the personnel. All men of the observation fleet were warned against exposing their eyes to the flash following the burst. To give further protection against flash exposure, black lensed Air Force gunner's glasses were provided for those whose duty necessitated watching the burst. Youth and years of scientific study combined to test the power of the atom. Young men with war-tempered nerves, steeled in battle, awaited coolly for bomb away. Learned scientists awaited tensely below to study the effects. As the metronome ticked away the eventful seconds, the world in questioning suspense waited. Unspoken was the question, what will happen? peaks into the power of the universe. Plutonium, one small particle burst into this staggering energy. Temperature at the explosion center is perhaps 100 million degrees Fahrenheit. The terrific pressure caused winds up to approximately 1,000 miles per hour. The radioactive vapor and debris rose to five miles and lasted an hour before dispersing. The 
inspection and salvage fleet move cautiously toward the target area, testing for radioactivity with Geiger counters. Firefighters brought the flames under control, preparing the damaged vessels for boarding and examination. Scientific instruments were removed from the ships and given to the laboratories for careful study. X-ray and high-speed atomic particles, both deadly types of radioactivity, were discovered. Heavy damage was sustained by a large part of the target ships. The Saratoga was severely hit. The Jap cruiser Sakawa was damaged so badly that it later sank. The submarine skate with hull intact was completely smashed topside and many other ships suffered heavily from the blast. Probably no fleet will ever again be gathered so conveniently for an atomic attacker. But neither would an aggressor nation use only one bomb. Bikini will answer many questions. The answers will pave the way for more questions. The never-ending stream of questions of the future can only be answered by continuous study today. Science seeks through research and development. Your air forces in war led the world in war power. Today, in peace, it leads the world in peace power.